everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I made a video and that's because I just got married. We had a very DIY wedding and we made a lot of the things ourselves. I made sure to record so that we could share some of those projects here with you guys. We hope that you enjoy watching the making of videos as much as we enjoyed making them. We were really happy with how most of our projects turned out. We had a somewhat small wedding, but you know I wanted a giant wedding cake because let's face it, you know I love cake. So this video is going to be showing you how I made the faux cakes that we had on the bottom. We had a four tier wedding cake. The two bottom tiers were fake cake and the two top tiers were edible cake and we still had plenty of cake left over. <laughs> I'll be adding this video along with several more to my wedding series. So if you're into that, please go check those out. And if you're enjoying my content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really does help me out. As always, I thank you so much for watching. If you recall from my previous video, this was my inspiration picture from Pinterest, just so that you remember the look that I was going for. And here we go. Enjoy. I had these photo boards that I made out of foam and fabric some time back, so I decided to repurpose them for our wedding cake. The fabric was just stapled on, so I took that off and this is what I was left with. I then measured the width of the cake stand I made to see what size I wanted to make that bottom tier. If you'd like to see how I made the cake stand, I'll put a link to the video up here. Next, I took some spray adhesive to make some blocks around the size I wanted the cakes to be, but then I realized that the foam cutter I had wasn't going to be tall enough to cut through all the layers at once, so I ended up having to do just a couple layers at a time, which you will see later. I found the center of my piece and pushed a nail through so that I could turn it around in a perfect circle, which turned out not to be so perfect, but that's okay. It was good enough for what I was doing anyway. I mounted my foam cutter to the table and worked on getting sections of the foam removed, trying to move as smooth as possible. This was a battery powered foam cutter and I don't know if it wasn't powerful enough or if it was just because it was old, but I ended up asking my uncle to convert it to electric for me so that I could get more power. I would say if you plan on doing this yourself, get an electric foam cutter. It'll make your life a lot easier. Also, burning styrofoam is not good to inhale. So I don't recommend doing it inside like I did. It was raining outside and we had all of our doors and windows open and our house still ended up smelling horrible for quite a while. You should probably also wear a respirator. I made what I thought was enough layers for my cake and proceeded to go outside to frost. Our quote unquote frosting is drywall mud. We had laying around from some home improvement projects. I ended up making my cake bigger than I originally planned for. So I had to salvage some of the smaller pieces I had already cut to get the height I wanted since I didn't want to go out and buy any additional foam. I went ahead and put the smaller pieces in the middle and then used the mud to fill in the gap. Because of how big the gap was, I had to fill in a couple of stages and then let it dry completely before I put more on. That way it wouldn't sag on the sides where the mud was really thick because it wasn't drying at the same rate as the other layers. We want the walls of our cake to be nice and straight or as straight as possible anyway. Once it was dry, I used a chisel to remove any pieces from the bottom that were sticking out so that we would have a nice flat surface. And then I sanded it a bit to get the big ridges and valleys out. There was a ton of dust and that air compressor was really helpful. You can see here, there's still cracks and some imperfections. I'm gonna do another thin coat to help with that. I went ahead and wiped down the whole surface area with a damp rag to get rid of any residual dust before I took it back outside. I put it on a little turntable thing I had to lift it up and make it easier to turn, but because the turntable was so much smaller, it didn't really want to stay on there. Probably still better than trying to do it on a flat surface though. I added some more mud and came back and drizzled water over the top while I was smoothing it. If I would have thought to use this technique the first time around, I probably could have skipped the sanding. it was completely dry, I painted it. Here I'm using regular old acrylic craft paint. On the layer above this one, I use spray paint. So you could use whatever you want. Different paints will give you different textures. It just depends on the look and feel that you're going for. 
I mixed together some epoxy to do the drip look on the top and just used acrylic paint to color it. I added just a little bit at a time until I got the look that I wanted and I tested it on a piece of paper to see how it was gonna look and I got the perfect color and then this happened. And I thought maybe I mixed too big of a batch so I tried again with a smaller batch and the same thing happened. So I think it's because the epoxy I was using was old. Um, I could obviously see it was discolored but it didn't matter to me because I was coloring it to look like caramel anyway. But since I had that issue, I went out and got a new container and tried again and that worked perfectly fine. I had done a little test piece trying to see how it was gonna look and that piece came out so perfect. I was trying to match it up to be the same when I did the big batch, but I was running out of paint from the first two attempts that blew up. So I finally got the color that I wanted and I was a little nervous from the first two disasters. So I was rushing a little bit in hindsight, I should have waited a little longer and let the epoxy thicken up so that I would end up with less runny drips. And I also should have had it sitting on top of something to allow the drips to fall away. But I did end up realizing that before it was too late, luckily. periodically and wipe the drips away as they thickened so that the bottom would remain flat and I wouldn't end up with any hardened epoxy drips at the bottom. And here's how it turned out. 